my father died when I was only three years old. So uh, I have very vague recollections. Um, however, I do remember very clearly not eating my breakfast as a little child. And when he was coming, you know, my mom telling me, here's your father, go and eat your breakfast. And I run inside and, <laughs> and I went on the table and eat. I think that's the, maybe the only memory I really have um, of him. I can see myself in my father for sure in those pictures. Um, you know, he was somebody who, from what I've gathered and from what I've seen, a very, very, very um, open-minded, um, free spirit. Um, everybody said he never liked wearing shoes, even when he went and represent St. Lucia um, overseas. He was actually um, St. Lucia's first fisheries officer. Um, he would go for jari. That was his favorite um, wear, um, um, footwear and he never liked buttoning his shirt. His shirt was always wide open. So everybody tells me, you know, um, in Chuzel, the kind of person he was, had a very big voice, because they used to call him Fatty, and it was because of his size and his height. You know, he was a huge guy, and <clears throat> you know. He seemed to have a little recklessness in him as well, as it relates to how he drove, um, you know. And, but he taught the fishermen a lot of things. Um, he was the one who set up the first fishermen's cooperative um, in Beaufort, he taught fishermen how to smoke fish. Um, you know, and he, he really, really loved the sea. And I, I think that has um, been passed on to me and also passed on to my daughter, who actually now works with the Ministry of Fisheries. Um, maybe one day she might <laughs> fall in his shoes as a, a fisheries officer. But uh, yeah, these are the earliest memories I have. But I do recognize the void, you know, of not having a father. Um, while my mom played a dual role, um, I must say thanks to all my uncles and, and my in-laws who also stepped in and, and, and supported my mom. Um, but I know it was something that must have had a deep psychological effect because I remember at the age of 17 attending a retreat. Um, it was a prayer, prayer retreat for a weekend and they asked us to write down things that we wanted to, to wash away or to burn. And I remember writing down the fact that I grew up without a father and, um, you know, we had to burn it so that we could have just let it go. And I never realized that that was something that was so deeply entrenched in my psyche. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons um, my kids, I make sure that I am there for them. And I want to urge all fathers out there that, you know, um, regardless of the relationship with your partner, your children are your children and never, never, never abandon the children. For people who have lost um, their, their, their father at an early age, I recognize that there's a void, particularly if you are attending functions and, and, and your father is supposed to also be included in that and he's not there, you know, you feel a little bit left out, you know, and um, sometimes people gravitate to other father figures you know, and, and, and they, they look at them as, you know, but we must have role models. Um, and I think recognizing what I did not have um, growing up, even before I came into politics, you know, I would have sponsored parents who cannot take care of the children at preschool, you know, um, you know, put my hands in a pocket because I recognize, you know, the hardship that some mothers can have without having that support system in place. I remember when my daughter was born <laughs> i think I, I i i i bought out the the, <laughs> the liquor at a particular um store to celebrate with my friends you know it was a very very joyful moment um, you know I, I i i really celebrated you know that, that, that and, and, and i you know i love all my kids very much i always want to be there for them I try to, 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 to make them recognize the mistakes that I may have made and that, you know, they don't fall in the suicide. While children have a mind of their own and they believe sometimes, you know, um, you know you, 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 you're old, uh, you know, but you have to let them know some of the life lessons that you've learned. It's very, very important that, you know, as fathers, we can sit down with our, they may not want to listen to us, but if you could give them practical examples and show them, you know, some people who may have not um, followed certain basic um, 
guiding rules and, and, and where they ended up. As much as possible, you need to give them a free rein, but always, you know, be at the back, watching over, you know, to stand them back on the right path. The fact that I grew up without a father, I think I recognize even more what I miss in, from my children, you know. Um, very recently, I have a young son, and, you know, he, he got um, a toy which needed him to use a screwdriver. A, and he told his mother, He's going to wait for me. Daddy can fix it, you know. And I felt so so good, you know, that you know, he, he, Daddy is a fixer. So um, you know that 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 I continue to remember that. And I think um, that is what maybe young children look to their father for someone who can fix the problem. Be present. Be present. Um, make the contact, communicate, um, you know, just spend time alone um, with them. You, you, sometimes you don't even have to speak, you know, just be there. Um, and, and as much as possible, you make your kids very, very comfortable so that they can open up to you. Um, sometimes, you know, we are so rigid and we're so quick to maybe accuse the, our kids that they, they close up and they confide, sometimes maybe even in the wrong person. So it's, I think, we, you know, as a father, make your children as comfortable as possible with you. Um, obviously, knowing the role, knowing the role that you play to, but as much as possible that they can come to you with any challenge that they have. Um, because most times, they think they can solve it on their own, they make a bigger mistake, and sometimes they go to the wrong people for the advice and they dig themselves into a deeper. But, Make them comfortable, continue to show them that you love them. I don't believe in spoiling at all, um, but at the same time, you know, children, you know, need to feel the comfort and the love of a father. In fact, for both parents, to all the fathers, Shosel, Saltibus and St. Lucia, I want to wish, you know, a wonderful Father's Day. It's just one day where we celebrate and sometimes even when we, we do it, on the mothers, um, we, we, we get them all kind of gifts for Father's Day. And even on Father's Day, sometimes we have to provide that for, for them to give us the gifts, you know. But it is our day, you know, let's enjoy it. Let's spend time with the family. Um, let us, let, let, you know, reach out maybe to family members as well that, that you may have not reached out for a little while, you know. Some, some of us don't, don't, don't see our, you know, family, um, our grandfathers, you know. Reach out and, and, and let them know how much you love them because we have learned, particularly in, in, in this environment, life is fleeting. And one day you're here, one day you're not, you know. And let us try to live as much as possible without regret.